I left the TCP port in the jacket. Okay, thank you for being with us here today for a press conference with NDP leader Jikmin Singh. We'll take your questions after some opening remarks. Bonjour tout le monde, merci d'être ici avec nous pour une conférence de presse avec le chef du NPD, Jigmeet Singh. On va prendre des questions à la fin des remarques du chef. So Jigmeet, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much. And thank you to the incredible frontline advocates and dental workers that are behind me. Really appreciate your presence. So we want to talk about the impact of, of dental care on people why this is so important, why we fought so hard to make sure in this minority government, we used our power to deliver dental care, starting with kids under 12 who will be able to get their teeth fixed starting this year. We know this is critical for people. We know this will make a big difference in their overall health. And we know that dental health is directly connected to your overall well-being. It's a class issue. You can see people who don't have access to dental care. It's apparent in their teeth and those who had access to it, it's also apparent in their teeth. Uh, we really believe this is going to help people out and it's going to make a difference for health outcomes. It's going to make a difference for kids. And when we expand it next year to seniors, people living with disabilities and kids under 18, it's really going to help out some of the most vulnerable and help set up people for a lifelong of health, a lifelong health and dental health as, as well as overall health. It also is important to, to take a moment to reflect on the inflation and how inflation is directly impacting workers and people. And we hope that the dental plan that we've been able to push forward will help people with the cost of living. Lots of people haven't gotten their teeth looked after because it costs so much. And now that the cost of living is even higher, it makes it so people are, are certainly not able to afford to get their teeth looked after. So that's one way to lighten the burden and make sure people have access to care that they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. But I also wanna mention when it comes to, to the impact of inflation, the approach we've seen so far has been to increase interest rates, which will certainly benefit the big banks, but it's actually gonna hurt workers. It's not gonna make it easier for people to pay their bills. In fact, it's gonna make it harder. And we've seen that the increase in the cost of living, increase in interest rates are hurting workers in a way that it's effectively a pay cut, that they're losing their ability to make ends meet because of all these costs going up. And I asked the question, why is it that workers end up suffering every time there is a cost of living question or inflation, it's workers that are hurt and big banks that benefit. I propose that the solution shouldn't just be about raising interest rates to put pressure on workers. It should be about making those at the very top pay their fair share, making the wealthiest that have made significant profits in this pandemic and this cost of living crisis that we're in, they should be paying their fair share. And we invest into programs like this, the dental care program into affordable housing. And so I really believe strongly the only way we can get through a cost of living crisis or an inflation crisis is by investing in programs like dental care and pharma care, investing in workers, investing in making life more affordable and taking on those at the very top. And this is just one example of how we can make life easier and more affordable by investing in something like dental care. Donc aujourd'hui, on veut parler de les soins dentaires et comment ça va aider les gens. Euh, on sait qu'avec le coût de la vie qui augmente, ça frappe fort aux travailleurs. Et quand la coût de la vie augmente, ça aide, euh, ça donne un bénéfice aux autres riches, euh, par exemple les grands banques. Et je rejette cette approche que si on, si on a une coût de la vie, une, une crise de coût de la vie, que c'est les travailleurs qui payent le prix, on doit s'assurer que les autres riches payent le prix, payent leur juste part et investir l'argent dans les programmes sociaux comme les soins dentaires pour aider les familles, pour aider les travailleurs. Donc, on, on propose euh, ce plan comme un plan pour... Euh, faire face à la crise d'abordabilité, ça va aider les enfants. On va attendre euh, les travailleurs de première ligne en, en santé dentale et aussi des organisations qui, qui représentent des familles et des, des gens qui vont, qui vont euh, être aidés par ce euh, programme. Et euh, on va continuer de mettre à l'avant cette idée que si on veut vraiment régler la crise d'inflation, on doit investir dans les programmes sociaux, on doit s'assurer que les autres riches payent le juste part et ce, ce ne doit pas être les travailleurs qui payent les prix pour la coût de la vie qui augmente. Donc, euh, maintenant, je veux passer la parole à euh, Dr. Kavita Matumanju. Uh, now, I want to pass the mic to Dr. Kavita Matumanju, who is a pediatric dentist who will talk about the, the impact of this type of program on, on the people that she sees, how it will impact children, and how it will impact their overall well-being, and her thoughts on this dental care program. 
I want to thank uh, Dr. Kavata Matumanju for being here, and the mic is now yours. Thank you. So this, uh, this plan is going to help many more Canadian children grow up with healthy teeth and healthy gums. And that's because implementing this plan is going to allow children to access early preventive dental care right from the time they're six months old. So before problems have a chance to establish themselves. So I'm a children's dentist and my role is to keep kids healthy and cavity free. So I'm really happy if I never pick up my dentist drill and I never have to place a filling in the mouth of a small child who has a cavity. Except that unfortunately in this country, there are thousands and thousands of families who just cannot afford dental care. So oftentimes these parents can only bring their kids in when there's a problem. And when I examine the mouths of these children, I'll see cavities, I'll see infection. I hear stories of missing school, of, of pain, of not being able to focus in school. And I see parents that are just so stressed. They don't want their kids to hurt. They don't want their kids to suffer, but they just don't know how they're gonna be able to pay for the care. So with the implementation of this plan, kids are gonna get the care that they need. And even better, with access to regular preventive dental care, there is the potential for many, many more Canadian children to grow up and to never ever hear the sound of the dentist drill. And I think that is just a hugely beneficial outcome for Canadian kids. So thank you. Thank you, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanna thank uh, Dr. Uh, Kavita Matamanju again for, for, for sharing that. Uh, you've heard it straight from a pediatric dentist, the impacts, first of all, on so many kids that don't have care and not only the health outcomes, but the uh, doctor also talked about the social impacts. If you've got teeth that are hurting for, especially for a young child, not being able to focus in school, uh, living with that pain are really important examples of how this program will not just help health outcomes, but also social outcomes. I really appreciate that insight. Uh, next, we want to hear from Donna Wells, who's uh, a part of the, the a part of the Canadian Dental Hygienists Association. So, as someone who works directly on the front line and hears lots of stories and sees lots of lots of people, uh, Donna Wells will share what this means, what this program might mean to the people that she represents, but also to the people that she uh, treats uh, as patients, as as people that come into her office and and offices like hers. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Donna Wells. The mic's now yours. Thank you so much. Um, so it is a pleasure to be here today and as a representative of the Canadian Dental Hygienists Association and as a dental hygienist that represents more than 30,000 dental hygienists working across the country. Um, CDHA applauds this investment in oral health care for low income Canadians. It's essential that the new federal dental program recognize the importance of preventive oral health care for the vulnerable populations. We look forward to working with government to ensure that dental hygienists be recognized as eligible oral health care providers in the program's final design. Essential prevention services provided by dental hygienists include oral health um, construction and education, debridement, uh, fluoride application, sealants, and oral cancer screenings. In most provinces, legislation allows dental hygienists to practice independently, providing dental hygiene care without a dentist on site. As a result, they increase access to care by delivering dental hygiene services in a variety of settings, including independently owned dental hygiene clinics, such as the Pearl Boutique Dental Hygiene here in Vancouver, which is where we are today. Um, we also provide services in long-term care facilities, uh, in community health centers, in schools, and in homes. Independent dental hygienists who own mobile equipment also travel to rural and remote communities and provide much needed preventive and therapeutic oral health care for targeted populations. Unfortunately, um, a lot of the provincial and territorial oral health programs do not recognize independent dental hygienists as eligible health care providers. Um, in this, um, we really want to ensure that all licensed oral health care professionals are included um, as providers um, in this new program, and that would include dental hygienists and denturists. So, and this would allow the most vulnerable in our populations to receive the quality oral care that they deserve. And it's really important to note that oral care is health care. Um, oral diseases are associated with various systemic health conditions such as diabetes, respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, as bacteria from an unhealthy mouth can enter the body through the bloodstream and airways. Canadians who don't have access to oral health care often find themselves in doctor's offices and hospitals, um, costing our health care system millions of dollars annually in avoidable expenses. 
as essential members of the oral health care team, dental hygienists have been at the forefront in advocating um, for prevention as an oral health care strategy. Whether dental hygienists work independently or whether they're part of an oral health care team, uh, we typically spend more time with our clients providing education and playing that vital role in preventing oral disease and helping Canadians maintain a healthy mouth. Currently, only 6% of Canada's national dental expenditure is government funded. And this is the second lowest rate worldwide among high income countries. So it's inspiring to CDHA to, uh, that the NDP and the Liberals and dental hygienists across the country are committed to driving change to make oral health a health priority. As primary healthcare professionals, um, dental hygienists know how important oral health is and how crucial preventive care is for the well being of our clients. We look forward to extending our support to government in this important work of improving access to oral care for the people of Canada. Thanks. Thanks so much. I want to thank Donna Wells for sharing the perspective of dental hygienists and the importance of uh, their work and the importance of making sure our, our program will provide uh, all the access necessary to dental health, and that includes dental hygienists. Um, I also want to take a moment just to thank uh, the Pearl Dental Health Boutique, and Emma is, is here. I just want to thank you uh, for, for having us uh, be at your wonderful um, office, and thank you for your, your presence here today. It means a lot. And I also uh, now want to hear from our second phase, which will be in 2023, will be for seniors, as I mentioned, uh, people living with disabilities and children under 18. So I think it's really important to hear from someone that represents seniors about how this will help seniors. Uh, we all know stories of seniors who aren't able to access healthcare, whether it's worried about affording their medication or not getting their teeth looked after. So we have Leslie Godet, who's a president of the Council of Senior Citizens with us today. And, and I really uh, wanna thank her for being here and, and invite her to the mic to share the impact on seniors. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jagmeet, and thank you everyone for um, involving us in this event. My name is Leslie Godette, and I'm president of the Council of Senior Citizens Organizations of BC, affectionately known as Costco without the T. Today, it is my honor to speak on behalf of our more than 70,000 members affiliated with 70 organizations located in all parts of our province. Costco is nonpartisan, but our policy is to give credit where credit is due. Thus, today, we congratulate Jagmeet Singh as leader of the New Democratic Party for his crucial role in negotiating the confidence and supply agreement with the Liberal Party. This has led to dental care being a commitment made by the federal government as part of its 2022 budget. Costco is very grateful for this. We have advocated for more than 20 years for a dental care program for seniors. We know that many seniors struggle with the high cost of dental care. Some have dental plans during their working years, which disappear upon their retirement, or who the plan's cost and benefits may change arbitrarily. This uncertainty can wreak havoc on budgets for seniors with moderate incomes. Costs can be prohibitive as aging teeth need replacement fillings, crowns, root canals, implants if you're lucky, or dentures. Those on minimum incomes of about $20,000 per year simply do not have extra funds to deal with dental emergencies. These seniors must give priority first to paying their rent and then must juggle to pay for food, medications, or getting their teeth fixed. Many are just not able to afford a visit to the dentist. Lack of dental care, as you have heard, has wretched consequences. Seniors with bad or missing teeth may be too embarrassed to go out this leads to the anguish of social isolation, which is obviously bad for your health. We hear of reports from our members in senior centers where the older adults in their communities regularly appear with severe pain related to the poor condition of their teeth. Some who cannot afford the discounted dental options available opt to have all their teeth pulled. And those with very poor or no teeth struggle to properly chew and digest their food. In short, social isolation, inadequate nutrition, and gum disease all contribute to other chronic diseases and poor health relating, resulting from cardiovascular disease, dementia, diabetes, and so on. Put another way, older adults with good teeth will generally be healthier. 
They will require fewer services from other parts of our embattled healthcare system and enjoy a higher quality of life. The omission of dental coverage from our universal healthcare system stands as a gaping hole in our approach to primary healthcare, as well as an issue of social justice. In closing, please be assured that Costco is prepared to work with government and with all political parties to ensure the dental care needs of older and indeed all Canadians are met. Thank you once again for including us in this event and promoting good dental care for all Canadians. Thank you. Ms. Godet, I just wanna thank you so much for being here and for sharing that perspective. And thank you for your advocacy. Uh, we were able to achieve this not alone, but because of the work of so many people that have been long fighting for dental care. And we wanna thank everyone who's fought for this, all organizations that have been championing the importance of it. And uh, Ms. Godet, I wanna thank you as well and your association. Uh, so we've heard from people who will directly either provide care or who will be, uh, who will be directly impacted. Uh, this is something that we are gonna continue to fight for and continue to push along. We've got the first phase secured in the budget. So that's children under 12. They will be able to get their teeth fixed starting uh, by the end of this year. And then next year, we'll work on the second phase, which will be seniors, people living with disabilities, and children under 18. Uh, we really believe this is a strong policy that's going to help so many people out. This program uh, that we fought, used our power to fight to deliver it, will help people. We'll make life better for so many people. And we'll help in the, in the cost of living going up, giving people a little bit of a support to be able to afford some vital care. Uh, with that, I'm ready for any questions that you might have. Um, je suis uh, prêt pour vos questions et je veux encore remercier tous les, uh, tous les gens qui ont pris la parole pour partager comment ça va impacter le membre de leur association ou uh, des gens uh, à travers les pays, mais ici en Colombie-Britannique. Donc, merci encore pour votre présence et je suis prêt pour vos questions. Again, I'm ready for your questions. So for participants on Zoom, I would just ask you to use the raise hand function. We'll take one question and one follow-up. Je vous demande d'utiliser la fonction lever la main si vous avez une question et on va prendre une question et une question suivie. I'm not seeing any questions on Zoom at the moment. So I will just turn things back over to you, Jigmeet, for final remarks. Sure, thanks so much. Uh, again, I wanna, thank, <clears throat> I wanna thank everybody that was present today. Your presence really helps us send the message clearly that we need to invest in dental care. And this program will be a big step forward. Uh, we are excited about how the children will be covered. We know that children need this care so that they can live a healthy life that the outcomes that they'll have with dental care services will will make their overall health a lot better and uh, next year we're going to continue to fight to make sure this program goes to the next phase which is for seniors and hearing from someone who represents seniors really helps paint the picture of how this will help a lot of people will be benefited by this so thank everybody for being here uh, thank our speakers and uh, thanks so much for attending this concludes our press conference thank